The title of the message today is called Stick With It. I want to talk to you about having a with it stick in your life. It's so important that we carry a with it stick with us at all times because we never know when the wrong thing is going to happen. We never know when we're going to need to pull out that with it stick and say, you know what, no matter what's going on, I'm going to stick with it. Go ahead and turn your attention to the video screen right now. ตายแล้วเนี่ยมันต้องจับหัวไงงั้นมันไม่ออกหรอกเออมันต้องจับหางแล้วจับหัวตอนแรกนึกว่าหมามันกัดกันหัวมันอยู่ไหนอ่ะ
You've got to make sure you stick together and you've got your with it stick with you at all times because you don't know when your brother or your sister in Christ needs you. I've had to ha hop on airplanes the day of to go pull somebody out of a drug-infested situation on the other side of the world and try to drag them to rehab. You never know the type of people that God will bring in your life. When you got those stick with it type friends, you want to make sure that you are that you are appreciative of that and that when they come out there to beat that devil over the head, that when it's time to get free, you're not like, a, oh, come on, somebody, like that video with that dog, right? Wrapped up in the snake, don't be like a dog that returns to your vomit. At the end of the day, you might have great friends that are willing to stick with it and to stick with you, but you can't go back there and slop up all that vomit you just threw up. You can't go back to your sin. Like a, like a, like a dog returns to his, to his vomit, so does a fool return to his folly. But you've got to make sure that you've got stick with it type people in your life, and when they beat that devil over the head, when they beat that serpent over the head, and they finally break you free, that you say, you know what, I am free and I am free indeed. That's one of the horrible things about addiction. One of the privileges that I have is, is ha having have started and managed two drug and alcohol rehabs on the other side of the world in South Africa, as well as a sober living facility down in the Cape area. And something about addiction is it's like that snake. It starts small. And snakes, snakes they usually creep in really, really slow. You know what? It starts with a little bit of marijuana. It starts with a little pill here or a little pill there. Then before you know it, you know, you're sticking a needle in you, and you've got a full-blown addiction, and it has wrapped itself around you and is suffocating your life. And you've got to make sure that you've got some stick with it, friends, that if they got to hop on an airplane and fly to the other side of the world to pull you out of a drug-addicted situation and spend thousands of dollars to do it, that they're willing to do it show me your friends and I'll show you your future who are you hanging with because who you hang with might be the very thing that hangs you come on who are you hanging with who are you hanging with Jesus wasn't hung on the cross so we could just you know hang with whoever we want because if we decide to play hangman with God and play around with the world the friends that you're hanging with might be the very ones that end up hanging you. Pick your friends and choose your friends wisely. That is so crucial and that is so important. Friend selection is key. Friend selection is key. It's so important. Even like your friends on Facebook, how many of them are actually your friends? I understand the social media network and all of that and being friendly, but that doesn't mean that they're your friends. A true friend will stick closer than a brother. A true friend will pull his with it stick out and beat the devil over the head no matter what it takes to get you free. And a true friend gets free, is free indeed, and says, I'm not going back to the vomit. I'm not going back to the folly. Number one, we need to make sure that we stick together. Book of Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 15 through 17, says this, starting in verse 15. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, Take a stick of wood and write on it, belonging to Judah and the Israelites associated with him. Then take another stick of wood and write on it, belonging to Joseph and all of the Israelites associated with him. Join them together into, come on somebody, join them together into one stick. Two are better than one. A cord of two or three is not easily broken. Jesus said where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. There are no islands in the kingdom of God. God didn't create, oh, come on somebody. God didn't create an island called Israel. He created a nation called Israel. Bringing people together. That's what we're called to do. We're called to bring people together so we can gather. Like in the book of Acts, you know what happened when they came together? They gathered. We've got to come together so we can gather more. So we can gather our communities. So we can gather for the kingdom of God. Come together so we can gather. He said, join them into one stick so they will become one in your hand. We cannot have disunity in this church. We cannot have disunity in your ministries. We cannot have disunity amongst believers in the kingdom of God. We've got to put our differences aside, move those dishes aside, and say, you know what? You're different. You've got different taste buds than I do. But even though, oh, come on, somebody, even though we got different taste buds, even though we're a little bit different, even though we like to order different dishes, we're all sitting at the same table. So he said, bring them all together. Make them one in your hand. When you are one, you won. When you are one, you won. When you're splintered, you lose. When you're one, you won. When you're divided, you lose. Number one, if we're going to have a with it in our life and a with it stick and stick with God's plan in our life, you've got to stick together. 
you, everybody look to the person next to you and say, stick together. Everybody look to the person next to you, point at them and say, we're going to stick together. Everybody pull your little stick out that you got when you came in here today. Pull it out, wave it in the air just like this. This little stir stick right here, going to stir it up in your life, going to stir God's plan up in your life. Every time that you drink coffee and you decide to stir it up, just like the, the man who was waiting to be healed at the pool until the angel came down and stirred it up. And Jesus said, you don't got to do that anymore. He said, I'm going to stir it up right in your life right now and heal you right where you're at. But you know what? Every time you're going to drink coffee, every time you take this little stir stick, you're going to remember this message. Stick with it. Number two is this. A stick is a weapon. As you saw in that video, those friends that were sticking closer than a brother had sticks, and they beat the devil with the stick. They beat the serpent with this. They beat him and beat him and beat him. A stick is a weapon. You don't want to walk outside of your house without your stick. Come on, somebody, this message is going to stick with you. You're going to, it's going to hit you a little bit later. You're going to go, whoa, all of a sudden I got it. You're walking outside of the house, you're going to say, let me grab my stick. Got to make sure I got my weapon with me. A stick, it's a weapon. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 24 says this. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, O my people, dweller of Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his stick against thee by the way of Egypt. You know what? The devil's got sticks too. The devil wants to come and beat you with a stick. He wants to come and hit you with his nightstick. You need not be in that club. Literally take your club and beat over that addiction that's got you all wrapped up in that club. You know what I'm talking about, those who were in that club last night. You need to take your nightstick out and beat the devil over the head that lured you into that place and told you to take those drugs that you were taking and, and start acting promiscuous like you did. And you know what? God is good and he's loving and he's here today. He says, you know what? You take that club from last night and you beat the devil over the head with it. He said, we're clubbing here today. We're clubbing the devil. We're clubbing his head. God says, I love you. I'm not here to beat you. I'm not here to whip you. I was already beaten for you is what he said. And I'm even sensing that prophetically right now. You grew up in a situation where you felt like every time you were going to mess up that the devil was there, he's going to hit you with the club. God says, well, I'm not clubbing you like that. He says, I'm loving you like that. God says, I, I love you today. He says, I'm not here to beat you with the club. I'm here to love you. There's open arms. I don't know what you did last night before you came in here today. But God says, you're forgiven as long as you ask me. He says, I love you. I love you. But the devil's got a stick too. He wants to hit you upside the head with it. So, uh uh, I'm coming to God today, giving my life to God. I'm going to be set free. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40 says this it says, He took his stick in his hand and he chose five smooth stones from the brook and he put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in his pouch. And his sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. Talking about David right there. Young boy David, he had his stick in his hand. you got to always make sure that you got your stick in your hand. Because you never know when you're going to come upon a giant. You're never going to know when that opportunity of a lifetime comes there. Although it's an obstacle, all of Israel saw Goliath as an obstacle, and everybody was afraid to face that obstacle. David said, it may be an obstacle, but I've got new opticals, and I'm looking at it as an opportunity of a lifetime. Come on, somebody. you got to take those obstacles and change your opticals and see the vision that God has for you and see the opportunity of a lifetime. You know, embrace, embrace problems because you're the solution. And when you can bring, come on, when you can bring a solution to a problem, that's a gateway to your promotion. you got to look at every obstacle with the right opticals as an opportunity of a lifetime. So, David. You know what he had? His stick in his hand. We always hear about the slingshot and the stone, but it says he had a stick. you got to make sure that you got your stick. If you're going to stick with it, God says, stick with me. Stick with my plan. Make sure you got your with it stick with you every single morning. Before you leave your house, make sure you're carrying your with it stick with you. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 5 says, the stick of the evildoers, the rod of the rulers, it is broken by the Lord. It doesn't matter how strong that nightclub was last night. It doesn't matter how strong that nightstick was last night. God says, I will snap it and I will break it and I will destroy it because my stick is bigger. My people who want to stick with you are bigger. My people, my people that have come together as one, we're here together to stick together with you. You are not alone. You are not by yourself. 
God says he's got a family here for you, and that family is here to stick with you and to stick with you no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it is. Exodus chapter 7, verse 8 through 12 says this, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh says to you, perform a miracle. Hmm, come on. Let me get off track here just for a little bit. It's not way off track. It's actually on the same track, but I didn't plan on saying this. What did he say? When Pharaoh said, perform a miracle. When's the last time we heard that? If you are the son of God, perform. If you, if you are the son of God, throw yourself off this mountain for it says that his angels will pick you up. If you are the son of God, come on somebody, you know where I'm going with this. That's that devil. That's a demonic spirit. That's that mindset of the world system. If you are the son, prove it. Prove it. Turn these bread. Turn these stones into bread. Prove it. Huh. Hmm. See, God said he already knew. This is, I love God. He's all-knowing. Exodus chapter 7, 8 through 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh says to you, Come on, God already saw it coming. Whatever you're going through, he already saw it coming. Whatever the devil had in his bag of tricks to pull it out for you, God already saw it coming. He says, when, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when, Pharaoh says to you, perform a miracle. Then say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it on the ground. Throw it on the ground. Throw it down before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers and the Egyptians and the Egyptian magicians, and also they did the same things by their secret art. Each one of them threw down his staff or his stick, and it became a snake. But Aaron's staff, his stick, swallowed up all the other staffs or all of the other sticks. God carries the big stick. God carries the biggest stick. When I was playing football in high school, that was a long time ago, could have played college ball, would have loved to play college ball, chose to go to Bible college instead, but could have gone and played college football and had lots of opportunities. I loved it. I loved the game. And, uh, but the person who would get the biggest hit that week in a game, they'd get the big stick. And they'd have this, this big, huge tree trunk type of a thing. It was heavy. You had to, like, pick it up uh, and carry it with your, uh, uh, and you'd put it in your locker, and then you could write your name on it. It was the coolest thing. It was called the big stick, and everybody would take that big stick, and they'd pass it around. Point number three is this. A stick signifies leadership. A stick signifies Leadership, like when I played football, the person who would get the big stick, the person who had their name on it the most, really was the team captain. But a stick, it signifies leadership. God carries the big stick. We just saw it right there. Moses threw a stick down, turned into a snake, a bigger snake, swallowed Pharaoh's sticks and his snakes. A stick signifies leadership. When you walk out of the house, every morning you got to say, I got to carry my with it stick. I got to carry my leadership I'm in leadership. I can't act like the rest of the world. They may be able to do that, but that's not for me. Because God called, has called me to be a leader. If you're called to be a Christian, you're called to be a leader because you need to lead a path to Jesus. Numbers chapter 17, verse 1 through 5 says this. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the people of Israel and get 12 walking sticks from them. Get 12 walking sticks from them, one from the leader of each tribe. Write the name of the man on his stick. And on the stick from Levi, write Aaron's name. There must be one stick for the head of each tribe. Put them in the meeting, put them in the meeting tent in front of the Ark of the Agreement, where I will meet you. And I will choose one man whose walking stick will begin to grow leaves. In this way, I will stop the Israelites from always complaining against you. God's got you. But you've got to make sure you stick with God. You've got to make sure that you carry your stick and you got your with it stick. How do you carry your with it stick? Every single morning when you wake up, you start praying. Every day before I start my day, I sit down, 
in one spot in my chair, and I pray. Before I even start my to-do list, I pray. I pray in my understanding. I pray in the spirit. I pray and I make sure that my head is clear. I make sure that I'm right with God. I make sure I take inventory. I pray for my family. I pray for this church. I pray for this community. I pray. That's the very first thing. I wake up before I do anything. I pray. I got my cup of coffee there, and I'm praying. And I'm in one spot. Yeah, I have the times. I pray all the time. I pray in the car. I pray in my house. I pray when I'm walking. Constantly praying. I'm praying, pray, pray. I pray without ceasing. So actually that, that phrase right there, when we pray without ceasing, it doesn't mean we pray 24-7 all the time. No, the word cease, without ceasing means we pray without ceasing at opportune times or strategic moments, kairos moments where God says, the window's open right now. He says, I'll open up the windows of heaven, but that window can close. And in those windows, in those kairos moments, you pray. So I'm always praying throughout my day, but when it's time to pray, I make sure that I seize the moment, squeeze it and hold it. So I pray every day, and I read the word of God on a, I'm on a uh, 365 Bible reading, and, all, and I'm reading the Bible throughout the day and other times, but that's just my time where I sit down and get my life right, and I've got a, a note on my phone, notepads on my phone, where I have a, a word where it says impressions, where I feel like the Holy Spirit has impressed upon something upon me, so I write that down. Uh, if I have a dream that night, I write it down, and I pray over it and say, God, what are you saying? So, so I, I read the Bible. And I pray, and I come to church faithfully. I come to church. I grew up in a family. We were in church every Sunday. My grandfather was at church every single day, literally every day. Went to church every day, took communion every day, developed an awesome habit of it. And so those three things right there, there's more we can add to it, but those three things, praying daily and without ceasing and throughout your day, having a lifestyle of prayer, praying daily, Reading the word of God and coming to church. That's how you stick with God. That's how you stick with his people. And that is how you stick with it. When you have that in your life, you can walk out the door every single morning and say, you know what? I'm going to keep the devil off of me. And I got my with it stick to help keep the devil off of you. Let me bless you before you go. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that everybody here today is going to stick with it. Everybody here today is going to take with them that little stick when they came in. And they're going to remember this. I challenge you, when you go home today, put this little stick that you got here today, it's different than the other sticks, and put it somewhere where you're going to wake up and look at it every day. Do that. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for that with it stick. That they're going to stick with you. They're going to stick with the plans of God in their life. Lord, that they're going to have friends that stick closer than a brother. Lord, that they're going to find those friends that stick closer than a brother here in this church, in these ministries, in the men's ministry, in the women's ministry, in the youth ministry, in the children's ministry, in the young adult ministry, on Sunday mornings, at the prayer, at the altar. God, I pray in Jesus' name, God, that every single one of these people, they would have friends that would stick closer than a brother. I pray that they'd take that weapon with them, the word of God, the sword of the spirit, and, Lord, that they would live a life that is above reproach because they are leaders. If they're called to you, they're called to lead. They're called to be an example, called to lead people to you. Now, as you go, I say, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May you always be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. May things go well for you even in the midst of your enemies. May you never be in need. May your children and your children's children be blessed and live a long life and be healthy. I bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Never forget to stick with it. Thank you.